Saints and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back. Yes, 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 I'm back with another Bible review. And this Bible review is going to be on the King James Version of the Expository Study Bible by Jimmy Swagger. Okay. Yes, the Expository Study Bible. I just thought this was a very unique Bible. I've never seen one like this. So, you know me, I'm trying to learn the Word of God and have not just learn it, but have understanding of it. So, I thought this would be a great choice. So, again, I'm here to share it with you all. So, this Bible, here's the features. Let me pull you down a bit. The features are right here, and it says the most unique aid to Bible understanding available today. It says virtually every scripture is self-explained. Mm. King James Version, but I'm really thinking it's the new King James because it doesn't have all the other thou saith and all that. But anyway, you got your biblical text in black and your expository notes in red. Expository notes are positioned immediately following the scripture, phrase, or even word. Example is on the back, which I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to go straight to the Bible. And it says, Corm Cornwell bonded leather cover. It is Smith's own binding. It has a concordance, maps, assorted Bible helps, um, utilizing some of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars. It is a large print. And it says Bible Dictionary, which it has a Bible Encyclopedia and Bible Commentary is abbreviated form. Okay, y'all see that? Hope you can see all that in here. All right, so that's the features of this Bible. So let's get into this. Let me pull you back up, take it out the box. All right, here we go. I know I'm a little okay. It's black bonded leather. Woo. This Bible was very interesting. I just I just had to get it. I had to. Just had to. So it's a bonded leather. You see the texture. Hopefully you can see that texture. It's not, I don't know. I don't really like this type of texture. It's just really hard to me. Um, but anyway, here is the gold gilding. Okay. It does have two ribbons. And you see here is a black and yellow head and tail bands right here. And this is what the spine looks like. It has Holy Bible, King James Version, the Expository Study Bible, Concordance, Jimmy, Swagger. And then we have, um, it just shows here that it is um, Cromwell bonded leather. All right. So that's it. So let's jump in. We have a, what is this? Um, it's not paper, but it's like, what is this stuff called? I forgot. But it's a paste down. Okay. Paste down. It's not vinyl. Just, it's not paper, but it's that other stuff. <laughs> paste down okay a little shiny you got some a card stock here page another page semi gloss and we have here our um presentation page where you have your from occasion and date all right holy bible containing old and new testament authorized king james version 1116 Elizabethan English is updated in some cases to reflect present terminology without changing the true meaning of the words. All right. 
This was copyrighted in 2010. We have a forward here. And we have seven reasons why the Expository Study Bible will help your understanding of the Word of God. So let's just go over these real quick. See what it says. I haven't really went. I flipped through it, but I didn't really go through it. So we're doing it together, y'all. Okay. And again, this is seven reasons why the Expository Study Bible will help your understanding of the Word of God. Number one. The King James Version is used with exception of the Elizabethan words such as ye, hath, thy, etc. In some cases changed to words presently used, making the text much easier to understand. Number two, comments follow virtually every scripture, giving an expanded meaning to each particular passage. Love that. It might be distracting to some, but I like it, okay? Just by the first quick view of it, I really like it. It says, the word expository presents a clinical meaning, which we have used in order to stay as close to the text as possible. Four, we have availed ourselves of the scholarship of some of the very finest Hebrew and Greek scholars. Five, theological insights are taught. So you're going to get taught some theology. Six, the significance of particular individuals and events as related to types of shadow of deeper spiritual truths is shared. And seven, practical applications are present, making the Expository Study Bible one of the most helpful tools on the market today regarding the understanding of the Word of God. And who don't want to understand the Word of God, right? So here we go. Then we have over here some contributors. All right. And then we get into the word. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, there is some ghosting. The pages are really thin, but they're soft. There's some ghosting back there. You see it? It is a two column. All right. And it's separated with this line here. So let's just go over this so you can see what you will be getting if you decide to purchase this. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit more just so we could see better. Okay. <clears throat> so this is how this Bible works. All the black is scripture and the red is what I would consider the commentary or the study notes or the expository, the breakdown of the scripture or the explanation of the scripture, which is right here. So you don't have to be flipping back and forth and all that good stuff. So let's read how it reads. So we know the black is scripture. So we have in the beginning, and I'm just going to skip this riff for now and just read this. So it says, I'm just going to read the scripture right now. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So that's all this. That's all. That's the only part that scripture. All this read is the commentary or the expository note. So let's read it. So it says in the beginning, and it's saying that it refers to the beginning of creation or at least the creation as it refers to this universe. God, unformed, unmade, uncreated, had no beginning. He always was, always is, and always shall be. So then it says God. The phrase in the beginning, God, explains the first cause of all things as it regards, in, as it regards creation. Now, here's scripture again, created the heavens and earth, could be translated the heavens and the earth, because God created the entirety of the universe. Now, you see that kind of broke that broke that down? I like that. I'm just going to read the next one, and then that's it, so you'll get a feel of it. And this is saying chaos, and it says, scripture in black, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So what is it saying? So you read that and you'd be like, what is, okay, what? Okay, let's read. God did not originally create the earth without form and void. It became this way after a catastrophic happening. What was this happening? This happening was the revolt of Lucifer against God, 
which took place sometime in the dateless past. So it's saying to me, it wasn't without form, but when Satan got down there, it was just it just got terrible because it was no life, right? It, it became void because God was not present. And that's when Lucifer got sent down, kicked out of heaven, right? And it says, and the spirit of God, which is what? It's telling us it's the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. And then it says the moving of the Holy Spirit signified and signifies the beginning of life. That's good. That's good. But that's how this Bible works. Okay. All the black is scripture and the red is the breakdown of what you just read in scripture. So that's how it works, y'all. It's pretty simple. I don't see a lot of cross-reference or anything like that. Okay, so the black is the scripture. Pull it back up a little bit. The black is the scripture, okay? And the red is the expository notes. You got your headers, you got your chapter sections. Okay. All right, this is, let me just get him into, okay, this is the poetic, this is the Psalms. This is how the poetic setting looks, it even breaking that down too. So you got your, this is what your poetic setting looks like, still broken up in two columns. You have your headers, your little bit of introduction here on what you're about to read. I always love that. All right. Here's Isaiah. Let's see what um and this is what the beginning of the chapters look like. The introductions are actually in the back of the Bible. We'll go there in just a second. Just still want to give you a feel of how this works. So if you don't like red letter, that's not gonna work for you. If you're distracted with the explanation in between the scriptures, this ain't gonna be the Bible for you. But I like it. Okay, I like it. It doesn't distract me because I like to go one word at a time anyway when I'm reading to make sure I'm pulling out what principles and instructions and decrees and precepts God has given me to apply to my life. So that is very helpful to me. Everybody ain't gonna like it. Everybody ain't gonna get down with it. Everybody don't like um, Mr. Jimmy either. So that might be an issue on all by itself, but to each their own. I like it, Okay. So here we go. Let me just go on back here to the New Testament. I just had it had something between the two. Um, here's the ribbon. Two ribbons. We have two black ribbons here. Okay. They're long enough. So you can use it. And here's the other one right here. All right, here is the other. Let me grab this other ribbon. So you do have two ribbons, black, and I think, yeah, satin on both sides. It's nice. It's, it's nice. It feels nice. It's nice and long. I do like the ribbon. It's thin, but it's still a um, nice ribbon. I like it. All right. So, okay, let's get into the new, oh, here it is. This is what I was looking for between the testaments. So we know Malachi is the end of the Old Testament. And then this is between the Testaments. So you do have something between the Testaments. And it gives you some good information here. Political preparation, economic preparation, moral preparation, religious preparation. And then you have the New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Translated out of the original Greek and with the former translated dignity, diligently compared and revised. And boom, we are into the New Testament here. And we have Matthew, same setup. You have your two columns. The black is the word of God and the red is the commentary or the expository notes. So let's just read how it's doing over here. Bring it down a little bit so you can see. So it says the book account of the ge generation, which is the lineage of Jesus Christ, which is who? The Savior or the Messiah. 
the son of David, the son of Abraham. The incarnation, God becoming man. Then it tells you, give you cross reference where you can find that to back that up. Okay, um, Abraham beget fathered. Okay, Isaac and Isaac beget Jacob. So you go through all those names. So let me just go to something else. Hmm. Okay, this is one. Let's just do let's just do this parable with the wheat and the tear. Because some people don't understand that. So let's just read a little bit. Then I'm gonna move on. It ain't gonna take a lot. I'm just gonna read a little bit. <laughs> and it says, Another parable put forth unto them, saying, Present the second parable. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, which is who? Christ, which sows good seed. What is this good seed? The seed is the word of God. Don't you love that? In his field, which is what? What is the field? The world. Mm, mm, mm. 25. But while men slept, who are they talking about? The church is often asleep. His, who is his? Christ enemy came, who was the enemy, Satan, and sowed tears, apostrates, among the wheat, which is what, true Christians, and went his way. Satan works mostly through professed believers. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'm going to stop after this, y'all, because I'm going to start getting fired up. But when the blade was sprung up, which means what? Refers to the good seed taking root, growing and having a healthy start. What happens? And brought forth fruit, which is what? What does bringing up fruit mean? Refers to the intended purpose, meaning you have an understanding of what God's word is saying. And so it's starting to bear fruit. Then, ap then appeared the tares also. What are the tares? The church has both the true and the false. Come on, somebody. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, what did he say? So this is refers to those who had helped sow the good seed. Sir, did not you sow good seed in your field? From whence then has it tares? No tares were sold. So why are they there? Mm, that's a good question. He said unto them, an enemy has done this, refers to Satan and his minister. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. The servant said unto him, will you then, will you then that we go and gather them up? Which means what? Rid the fields of the tares, which is the evil. But he said, no, least while you gather up the tares, Ye root, ye root up also the wheat with them. So he was like, no, nah, we don't want to do that. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. And then I'm going to stop right here at 30. It says, while the tares, which is what? False doctrine were to be. Let me just, let me straighten it. So it's telling us. While the tears is false doctrine were to be pointed out, no force was to be used to take them out of the field. To do so would be to destroy some wheat. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just going to leave that right there. Okay, so y'all see how this go? Y'all see how that works? I think it's very helpful in my opinion. Some people may not like it, but I do. I think is extremely helpful, extremely helpful, right? So basically, y'all know how it flows. The black is the scripture, the red is the expository note. So let's go on to some of these helps because I don't want this video to be too long. All right. Mm, mm, mm. mm, mm, mm. Y'all gonna see this Bible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, so let me get to the end of Revelations real quick. Just bear with me when I get to the extra helps. 
And then we're going to end this video and y'all can go on about y'all way. Okay, make sure you give this video a like and a comment. If you have this Bible, how you feel about it. If you don't like it, what you don't like about it, you know, leave a comment. Holler at your girl. All right. Would you use this? If you think it's too much? If you think it's good, just put a comment, a heart emoji, a praying hands on emoji, an amen, something. Support the channel with a like and a comment, please. Thank you. So you have your introduction to the Bible. You got your languages of the Bible. You have here your divisions of the Bible, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, showing you here Old Testament, New Testament. Then it's going to talk about how the Bible is arranged, the arrangement of the Bible. All right, then it's going to talk about the canon of the Bible, the text of the Bible. All right, you're going to get your chronology of the Bible translation. All right, if you're interested in that, you're going to get your money, weights, and measures. All right, you got your money, your weight measures, your liquid measures, your dry measures, all here. Area measures, window measures. Then you have your Jewish calendar here, which might be very helpful. It's talking about, you know, your seed time, winter, cold, harvest, summer, heat. So you have your Jewish calendar here. All right, so if you want to know about those feast days and all that good stuff, then it's giving you plants and animals of the Bible. Oh, I like this. It's different. Almonds, barley, cedar, corn, apple, fig, flax. Is that where we get our flax seed from? Okay, we got olives, palm trees, pomegranates. So then it goes into your animals, you got your birds, your fishes, your insects, okay? Then you have over here terms frequently used in the Bible study. So it's giving you some frequently used terms that can be very helpful. You hear in words, you'll be like, what does that mean? You have your harmonies of the gospel. Incidents of the birth and boyhood of Jesus Christ till he was 12 years old. Inauguration, can't even say the word, inauguration of Christ's public ministry. Inauguration, I don't know. I know what I'm trying to say, but it just ain't coming out right. Forgive me. Harmonies of the gospel still. Don't be laughing at me, y'all. I see y'all laughing. I hear you. I hear you, okay? Harmonies of the gospel. Here we go, still going on and on. Let me make sure I didn't skip nothing. Then you have here parables and miracles of the New Testament. You have miracles of our Lord. So they're gonna give you all the miracles here. Very nice. Miracles recorded in Acts and the Apostles. Okay. Miracles referred to in Epistles and Revelation. You forgot that. Then you have your old faithful concordance to the Holy Scripture, which is just basically like a little Bible dictionary, give you a word, and then it tells you where you can find it in Scripture and what, and give you a brief, brief definition of what it is. So that's what a concordance is. So let's just keep on going. I think that's it. Of the extra helps. Yeah, I think that's all. Let me make sure. Okay, let's see. Okay, still a little, still a little stuff back here. Okay, so here is the end of the concordance, and then we have what we say. It says, "What must I do to be saved? All are sinners. What did God do about this situation? Substitution and identification." What does it mean to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? So it's giving you some helpful tips here. Father and the faith and not works. It's time. It's time now. 
this is good. I like this. So, yeah, you have all these little topics here. What is a water baptism? The will of God for your life. The baptism with the Holy Spirit. What your prayer life should be looking like. Um, some things that will help you. Church attendance. And then you go over here and it'll give you a breakdown of the Holy Spirit baptism. Scriptures on the Holy Spirit baptism. It lists them here. Then you have here the cross, your faith, and the Holy Spirit. So it's going to break down what the cross is. If, if, if that was never broken down to you. What faith is and what the Holy Spirit is in your victory and restoration. Come on, somebody. And then scriptures for a foundation. All right. Then it just gives you a couple of notes, blank pages for notes. If you want to take you some notes here, notes, just blank pages here, a few pages. That's good, helpful. Then you get to your maps. All right. And it's on a shiny card stock. All right. Exodus. The Great Sea, Egypt. I hope y'all can see this. I'm in here. The Empire of David and Solomon. Early Israelite settlement in Canaan. The Kingdom of Israel and Judah. Jerusalem in Jesus' time. Palestine in New Testament time. Oh, I like that. <clears throat> the Roman world. Paul's journey to Rome. And that's it, y'all. That's it. The spread of Christianity. And then you got this cardstock again. With this, um, it's not, I don't want to say vinyl, but I'm going to say vinyl paste down with this, um, bonded leather here. And that will be it, y'all. Hope you like this. Um, I try not to take up too much time. I'm running like 15 minutes. So that's quick for me. Amen. So, yeah, this is what it is. This is the expository. Study Bible by Jimmy Swagger. Check it out. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.